This IFS report looks at living standards, poverty and inequality in the UK. We look at data on people and households, and we look at data up to and including the latest available, and that's for the financial year of 2014-15. These data take households' income after paying any taxes and after receiving any state benefits as a proxy for their standard of living. When comparing these incomes over time, we adjust them for inflation so that we are measuring what people can actually afford to buy with their money, and we also adjust for household size. So for example, households with several children will need more income than a smaller household in order to achieve the same standard of living. And we're going to express all monetary amounts as the equivalent amounts for a childless couple. Average living standards on this measure of household income have now finally returned to their pre-crisis levels. So this means that on average, people's incomes are about as high now as they were back in 2008-9 at the onset of the most recent recession. A key driver of that recovery in incomes has been the rapid rise in employment. And actually in 2014-15, the proportion of people with a job rose at its fastest rate for over 25 years. But not everyone is back to where they were. Older people are actually much better off on average than they were back in 2007-8 by around 10%. Uh, but younger people, those under 30, are still worse off than they were by around 7% though they are slowly starting to catch up again. Now, a key factor holding back the pace of this recovery in income since the recession has been that while the number of people in jobs has risen over the past five years, the amount that they earn on average has fallen. But what about inequality, the difference between rich and poor? Well, here is household income by percentile. So someone with a higher income than 90% of the population, the so-called 90th percentile, has income around four times as high as someone at the 10th percentile. And that ratio hasn't changed much in recent years. And in fact, that measure of inequality is at a similar level to back in 1990, though it did used to be much lower before the rapid rise in inequality in the 1980s. Now, when the economy is growing quickly, we often expect inequality to rise. But recall that this particular recovery has seen a very fast increase in the number of jobs, and that has mainly pulled up incomes at the lower end. So, for example, take the poorest one-fifth of households, 62% of those had a person in work in 2011-12, but that had risen to 65% by 2014-15, whereas for other households the change was much smaller. Since 2011-12, it is the lowest earning workers who have seen the biggest proportional rise in their earnings, and that's because they have increased their hours of work, undoing some of the decreases in their hours of work that had occurred earlier during the recession. Well, that rise in jobs has had a profound effect on child poverty and on inequality among children. And this has been going on for some time. Back in 1994-95, 20 years ago, 23% of children lived in a home where no adult worked. But by 2014-15, that proportion had fallen to 13%. These reductions in household worklessness are, of course, particularly important in helping the poorest households. Looking at that another way, in 1994-95, in the poorest one-fifth of households with children, 27% of their income came from paid work, but by 2014-15, that number had risen a lot to 42%. For households in the middle income fifth, something very different has happened. Their pay levels actually rose less quickly over that 20-year period than their income from state benefits. And as a result of that, the proportion of their income that comes from benefits has risen from 22% back in 1994 to 30%. This is in large part due to a large rise in the amount of in-work benefits that they're able to claim. Now, these data reveal another trend which makes children from low- and middle-income backgrounds look rather more similar to each other than they used to. Compared with 20 years ago, both of those types of children are now much more likely to live in private rented accommodation. For the middle-income fifth of children, that's largely because the proportion who live in a house that their family owns has fallen substantially, from 69% back in 1994 to 50% now. For the poorest fifth of children, it's largely because of a big fall in the proportion who live in social housing, from 50% to 37% over that same period. Now, you're probably wondering what the recent vote for Brexit will mean for all of this. The one thing that we can already say with a high degree of certainty is that national income will be lower over the next few years than it would otherwise have been. All serious analysis points in that direction. But what's much harder to say is exactly who will bear the brunt of that. That will depend on lots of things, including the policy choices that the government makes in response to any downturn in the economy. For more details on all of these findings, you can go online and download the report from the IFS website.